Do you like that giant of local broadcasting? Yeah, that's great. That's yeah, good, yeah. giant is good. <laughs> I'm going to find a beanstalk next. <laughs> that kind of sums it up. Yeah, it? well, uh, after you know, 30 years, uh, I guess it does. Yeah. We are so happy to be joined by Linny Peterson, the wife of the late Captain Jack Peterson. And we go way back, Linda. It's so oh, great darling. to see you, honey. <laughs> it's like I watched you grow up. <laughs> what did the captain think of Well, that started... Uh, I think back in the middle, mid '80s, we had a program director. His name was Jim Whitehead, right. who uh, had the idea that since we were in New Bedford, which was a seaport town, that the morning show should have like a crew: It'd be a sports guy, which would be Bernie Picanisco, right. and a news guy, which was Russ Baldwin, and that crew needed a captain. <laughs> so there, therefore, Captain Jack kind of stuck. For a time, we we didn't use it, but. You walk down the street and people say, hey, Captain, how you doing? Yeah, right, the captain's stuck. And they, they wondered whether, you know, are you really a captain? Uh, no, <laughs> not really. I just play one on the radio. So. Well, sadly, we lost Jack about four years ago, but it's really great that his name lives on through this dog park, and he was such a dog lover and an animal lover. How did this whole dog park thing come into fruition? Stanton Foundation out of Boston gave us a, a big grant for the park. And the city council came to me, Henry Bousquet, my wonderful Henry Bousquet came and said, we would like to name the dog park after Jack. Right. And I said, absolutely. Jack loved animals. You are you, Oh, you're jealous, huh? And I always said that beautiful radio voice was the voice of the animals who had no voices. If you think about Jack Peterson, anybody that knew him, the first thing was is a sense of humor. He loved to laugh. Well, Jack, of course, is not originally from New Bedford. We're going to do a little biography uh -oh. of Jack Peterson. Jack Peterson, my, this is your life. Is right? it, where, where's my <laughs> seventh grade teacher? Is she yeah, coming in? We don't have any surprise oh. guests. I'm sorry to say this is it right now. Okay, could what have brought my wife or my dog in. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Okay. Sadly, pancreatic cancer, and that's one of the worst ones because I, you know, we've seen Michael Landon, and uh, you mentioned different people Patrick that have Patrick Swayze, and it's unfortunately one that. There's not a lot they can do when it goes quick. No, and if they catch it very, 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 very early, maybe. But Jax was really full-blown. Well, tell me about that radio career, because I had the good fortune of interviewing him. And it was one of my favorite interviews that I ever did. And he talked about his whole career and that great radio voice and how much he loved being a broadcaster. He did. Honest to goodness, I was a mistress to the radio business. Um, he loved it. And he was perfect for it. His personality was perfect for it. Did you know early on that you wanted to do something in broadcasting? Yes. I always used to listen to the radio. My mother would have the radio on in the morning. Uh, we'd have WBZ on. Between my junior and my senior year in high school, I took a six-week course at the Cambridge School of Broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Johnny Most was one of the instructors. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Got out of high school, graduated, uh, and went to another school in Boston, the Leland Powers School of Radio, Television, and Theater. All they had for, uh, for you in the TV course was three boxes with red lights on them, so that if you were a performer, you'd know to look at the red light. So that was. We have a red light here. No, we don't. Oh, I don't see a red light in the office. building. No. <laughs> Sitting on the front steps of the school, and some guy says, "Gee, I hear there's a summer job open up in Lowell." And there was an audition for the job. We we're going to have 16 guys in reading uh, a commercial and reading news. And before I graduated, they liked me so much, they offered me a full-time job uh, as a nighttime guy. Well, you know, he talked about early in his career, when his career first began, it was a different time, too. The oh, DJs, yeah. I mean, you were on a station and you were playing music. You were the DJ. You were a big celebrity, even at nighttime. Oh, yeah. And he had this thing, you know, like, you know, the Wolfman Jack had his thing. Well, he had this thing, Wacky Jackie. Wacky Jackie. Do you remember that? Yes, were you around for that? I was, at, I was at the tail end of that when I first met him. At that time, I, I wasn't Captain Jack. I was Wacky Jackie. No, sir. Because, I never heard that before. Because you had to be, a, you know, kind of a personality at night. And that was Wacky Jackie because... WBZ in Boston had a personality at night who was Juicy Brucey, mm -hmm. Bruce Bradley. So they said, oh, you can be Wacky Jackie. So I was Wacky Jackie for like three or four years. I'm Wacky Jackie at WLH. <laughs> We're having a beautiful night tonight. Glad you could be with us. Boom, 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 boom. And the song comes in. He was so good. It was like so natural. Yeah. And um, I love that about him. Cause it was, and everybody would say to me, does he sound like that at home? And I'd say, why? What do you think he goes? Hi, I'm Jack Peterson. No, that's the voice. Oh, that's like the thing that was in. his voice. That yeah, was, that's the way it was. He always kept it down here. The competing station in Lowell, they had an, 
a relationship with the program director of the chain that owned WNBH. Station in Lowell said, can you find a job for Jack down somewhere, one of your stations? So they were trying to get rid of the competition. Yeah, right? exactly. So that's actually a compliment, isn't it? I guess, yeah. They were like, we can't do anything as long as sideways. Wacky Jackie is at that other station, right? Sideways compliment. So I got a call from the program director of the whole Hall Communications station chain, which is here in New Bedford. Said, come on down and we'll talk. I called Gil Santos. No relation. No who, relation. No relation. Uh, who uh, I asked... <laughs> I'm, I got an offer to come to New Bedford. They're offering me X amount of dollars. What do you think? Uh, he said, oh, yeah, you can live like a king down there for that. So I, I came down and... Uh, well, you did the morning show on WNBH for a long time. Did the morning show there for uh, 13, 14 years. Somewhere in 93, 94, the management said, uh, your AM days are done. You're going on FM. You're going to do uh, CTK at night, uh, country music. And then they saw the error of their ways and said, oh, let's go back to the AM station. And uh, you know what? You can bring your wife along. Right. First mate, Linny. First mate, Linny. So I was Captain Jack. She was first mate. Now, having this dog park named after Jack, what does that mean to you? Because this is really a way for his name to live on through something that he loved directly across the street from the high school where we did like a thousand games. A right? trillion games. That I've, yeah, it does. That means a lot because it was something that he loved. And the park is designed exactly like he would like it because the dog runs and you sit on a bench. That's the way he would think it's a great way to do it. He would have loved it that way. We're really happy to see that this dog park is named after Captain Jack. And uh, I have some great memories, as you do too, and nice to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you, Paul. Listen, this is I the highlight of my job here. Yes. You got a hug here and there, you I know. I hug handsome guys. I love them. Hey, Reese's. Reese's. Reese's, come here. Look at you. Hi, Joe. Look at you. Are you going to say hello? Say hi. Hi. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and it's Reese's. Fitzgerald. Wacky Jackie to Captain Jack. There you go. I guess Wacky Jackie probably wouldn't work now because you're more dignified. Well, you you're know, like the elder statesman. It's of not the politically correct anyway to call somebody wacky. You know? <laughs>